So, hello everybody. My name is Friedrich Friedrichsson. I'm from Performing Arts Center Iceland, um, which is a promotional and a resource center for performing arts in Iceland. And now a new partner for the upcoming ISOT festivals throughout the years. Uh, we are here on the, in the session, Meet the Curators, uh, Perspectives on Curating ISOT Helsinki. And uh, for the people not here, this is uh, live streamed on ISOT YouTube channel and will be available after this event. So uh, the topic is uh, looking into the Behind the curtains, how how do we program a platform like this? What are the challenges? What what what's uh, fresh? What's uh, what was a surprise? What uh, what to be expected? Um, looking into the mechanics of of doing this platform, but I uh, we have here uh, curators and co-curators from uh, Norway and Finland. And I would like you to introduce yourselves and just tell us a bit about you and your background and who you represent here. So uh, uh, I'm Sam Reimakers. I'm the artistic and general manager of uh, Danse Sus Oslo. Um, and I was so in, in, the, in the jury uh, for this uh, edition. And I, uh, I used to work in Bruges in Belgium. And in 2014, when uh, uh, I Scott was in Oslo, I was in the jury selection uh, for that uh, edition. And that was an international selection with three uh, international presenters. So maybe I can talk later a little bit about the differences, uh, different approaches about that. And my name is Rika Tietz, and I am a curator and a producer. And currently I'm working in the Helsinki City Theatre in the as a curator in their stage for contemporary performance project as well as uh, I work in an association, Idolchi, with which is uh, what we founded with choreographer Anna Mustonen and harpsichordist Marianna Henriksson, and we do interdisciplinary projects there. And um, I was part with, together with Mikael, we did the Finnish pre-selection uh, of the Ice Hot pieces, so I was, I was one of the national co-curators. So, <laughs> hello everybody. I am Mikael Aaltonen. I work um, at uh, Tansintalo, Dance House Helsinki, which is of course happy to host uh, most of the I ISOT event this time. I have a little bit history with ISOT, especially re with the two previous editions, uh, the one in Reykjavik and, uh, and uh, Copenhagen. So, which uh, was slightly different kind of curatorial processes. Uh, there was a national uh, kind of curatorial board, and then a uh, Nordic, uh, Nordic uh, actual jury. So, so uh, maybe we go a little bit in, in that those details later. But yes. <laughs> yes, and now um, now we have. Uh, <laughs> you're Hello. You're oh yeah, you're everywhere now. <laughs> Can you hear me? It's just like. Uh, Watching ours, we yes. can hear you. Yes, ah, yes, ah, we yeah. can. There you are. <laughs> yes, uh, I can see I'm, um, I'm present uh, in the space now in a huge way. Uh, yes, uh, my name is uh, Irene. Uh, I'm a performer and a curator. I work um, as a dancer now in Carte Blanche in Bergen in Norway. Uh, and I also curated the uh, Ravne Dance, um, which is a festival in the south of Norway for the last uh, 13 years, together with my team. Um, and in ISOT, I was a co-curator also, together with Samme. So I mainly participated in the pre-selection work uh, uh, of the Norwegian um, uh, participants. Yes. Well, thank you. And uh, now you, you know the people here. So let's dig into the discussion. Um, if someone pick up the ball, maybe you, Sam, uh, just talking about this selection process. Uh, just how was yeah. it? What's, well, the, what's the? Maybe I can explain a little bit how the selection process was, and it was different than uh, other editions. So we chose also uh, this time that um, 
um, that the artistic directors of the five partners uh, who had the, um, the, the position in the, in the jury uh, to make the selection. Um, we uh, wanted to broaden up that, that, that group um, by uh, inviting co-curators. Uh, and on top of that also, we uh, asked uh, three to five national partners to also give input in that. And input in, this in the, the, um, the way to make the long list that we, that we wanted to make. And um, the, f the selection um, possibilities were in a way from different kind of perspectives. There was an open call for everyone. Uh, so all companies, all artists could uh, apply for that. Uh, there was also an open invitation towards artists, uh, and those open invitations uh, came from and the curators, the co-curators, and the national uh, partners. And we chose that also because we, um, we wanted to avoid that we have maybe some blind spots in, in, in the field that we maybe uh, don't know the hidden gems. And by, by giving that, uh, that broader perspective, broader look to the field, uh, with working with the curators, the co-curators, and the national partners, we try to avoid that. Avoid the, those blind spots, um, and then we made a, an, a, an, an, a national um, uh, pre-selection, and then together with the curators and the co-curators, we talked about those uh, um, those pre-selections, and on top, and from that on, we uh, we created the whole uh, the whole program. So is the final say in the hands of? You, the, the these five curators from from each. Yeah, country. because we choose also because it's a, a quite big group then at the end, and at the end of those selections, you need to take in mind also some um, some other uh, perspectives, some other other uh, pure practicalities at a certain time also because we you, know, yeah, you program in, 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 in different kind of venues uh, with different kind of technical um, possibilities or or um, uh, limitations. Uh, and at the end, some things are also decided because of that also. And then another, another quite um, extra layer that we hadn't foreseen was the change of dates because of the, the pandemic. That um, the initial program was a little bit different than the, the program we have now. Uh, and that was because of uh, availability of uh, companies or artists that couldn't come now. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, maybe... Uh over to you, uh, Miguel, um, because you you've been in this this scene for for a long time, so you've followed many of the platforms. So can you, can you give us like a bit bit of a background how it was differently done in those those previous platforms? <coughs> well, like I said, that perhaps more closely, I followed the two, two previous ones. I haven't followed so how would I say extensively the whole trajectory of the ISO. But um, if I try to really remember the situation we were working in, of course, it was heavily marked by the pandemic in many ways. I think this was really a pandemic edition in many ways. And I think it was something that was clearly part of the discussion ongoingly in a way that what is possible and uh, for, for the event and what is possible for the artist. And I would imagine that also it was playing into the applications, I would imagine, uh, in my mind, it, it, it could be seen from the app, app who, who was applying and it, with what kind of projects also. So I, I think that was clearly a big, big difference and I, I think it was also a little bit in the timelines that were a little bit in the original sort of idea of, of doing it with the timeline of, of, of going towards February and uh, I think what was Really, I think a reaction to pandemic that the timelines were kind of prolonged, that people could apply with super fresh things, knowing that a lot of a lot of the things had been postponed and even cancelled along the way. What well, we've seen, like through throughout this platform, that we have a uh, lot of pieces that were premiered earlier on in mm. in nineteen and and maybe some some even earlier than that. So that it. Reflects in the in the in the selection. Um, so uh, maybe I can also add uh, an, an, a little thing, but it's quite important also that we choose this time also not made the selection only on productions, mm -hmm. but also on artistry of the artist itself also, yeah. so that we could choose for an artist, 
and then and even in dialogue with the artist looking for the, the best production mm -hmm. in the context of uh, Ice Fox. So not uh, only for the artist to, to present one work, so he could have like a selection of s some works that he has already done? Or yeah, or also have the dialogue of, um, because mostly, and that's logic also, you want to present your latest work, yeah. but maybe the latest work is in an, in an international context, maybe not the best work to present for an, 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 an a full um, professional mm -hmm. audience here. Mm -hmm. And maybe m with that dialogue with them, like talk about another production that maybe have the potential for a, m a broader international audience or a broader international touring. Mm -hmm. That was something that we opened it up now also as well. Uh, yeah. So um, rather from the art, rather going to the artistry of the uh, artist uh, than only specifically on the production itself. Mm -hmm. But you have, uh, have also uh, within the, the the mission or the aim of of ISOT is this sustainability and supporting the e, the ecosystem of of the artists or, or the dancers or choreographers in 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 uh, in the Nordics. That uh, that's also an another layer looking into uh, how the the diversity and 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 the broad spectrum of of the dance like going to you how, how how do you feel that you have captured those aims have you how is it are they manageable with with all the challenges of finding space finding works and and looking into all of these well going to the question of sustainability like how do we define sustainability in this sense um maybe what we were thinking um when making the selections in terms of sustainability is um, seeing what kind of productional structures are supporting the works, like uh, are we uh, selecting works that are able to then tour uh, and to have a longevity after the, after the platform, uh, in, in terms of the artists themselves, like how, how do they work, what kind of structures they have around them. Um, so not to kind of put an artist in a situation that we kind of drop them in the deep end of the pool into a platform that um, perhaps uh, productionally or in other terms of sustainability does not work for them. So that's kind of what we also looked at when looking at the works, maybe Mika, no, you no. wanna well, add something to that? Well, well I, I, I do think that this was pa ongoingly part of the discussion. Of course, one aspect of not. I think, of course, we discussed this in in certain cases in length on national level also. But I, I don't think I would say that. Of course, it's 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 a factor in the discussion, not perhaps the sort of. A decisive factor no. in ma many no. ways but 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 I think we try to try to discuss it from various points of view and I think this is of course what was at least for me really how do I say informative and and to have this discussion also on Nordic level because of course we I mean I always feel that there's so much more to know about the wider Nordic context and uh, and the ecosystems in various countries which are fairly different in many ways yeah, that was something I would like to add that even though I was um, only involved in the process of selecting the Finnish shortlist, uh, this has been really eye-opening to hear from the other Nordic countries what kind of uh, productional structures, uh, ecosystems exist in other countries. So that was a really, really good experience to be in a part of that. I don't know, Irene, how do you feel about that? Uh, yes, I agree. It was very uh, interesting to hear and understand that some of the structures we discuss a lot or feel we deal with a lot in the Norwegian field, they can look different in other Nordic countries close to us. Uh, and to jump on this topic of sustainability, uh, for me, it was actually quite interesting. Uh, I mean, both what Summit touched upon, this possibility of discussing artist or artistry, not only uh, the previous work created, uh, but also the fact that because of COVID, we had uh, many people applying with the productions that were not um, completely fresh or new, the newest creations they, 
they have done. And um, I think concerning the, the Norwegian scene and what gives possibilities and also what gives uh, economy uh, for Norwegian artists, this is an interesting topic in itself to, to search and think how we can give life to, I mean, it can be giving life to productions over longer time, uh, but also to understand uh, how artists actually maybe want to work uh, because I feel like the structure in Norway is really pushing towards creating new and also uh, the curating scene in general, in my opinion, have this uh, drive forward, like what is your newest uh, creation? What will you create next year? Uh, and sometimes I don't think this necessarily goes along with interest of diving into topic over time or recreating or uh, the also also on a sustainability level uh, staying with something for longer time uh, so uh, these things came together for me in a very interesting way if you think about the structures in Norway at least yeah and then I can add that maybe it's also a question I mean I think we had really interesting and good talks uh, about this in the in the between the curators and co-curators but how well this uh, it was also like an aim to be transparent in the um, process and how well this uh, type of um, responsibility that the curators try to take how well this is transferred actually to the artists or the applicants even uh, this is like a, a big question of course yes Thank you. I mean, and then, then maybe going to whomever will pick up the poll, but the difference between curating this festival, which is a, a platform or showcasing festival for the, the Nordic contemporary dance versus other festivals, what's, what's the thematic festivals or smaller festivals where, where you're bound by these, these uh, restraints of um, finding a balance between the Nordic countries representing the wide variety within the country. So, do you? So, what, what, what can you kind of explain the difference between curating this and maybe some other types of, of dance festivals? Um, well, I think it's it's again also referring again to this um, non-production approach also that that we rather um, um, put the artist in in the spotlight. And then with uh, the specific pr uh, project that is the best for that moment also. So that's different than, an, than an, um, a festival with a thematic uh, um, approach in a way. Yeah. Um, and of course we are uh, representing five uh, huge fields and there are some uh, similarities but there are also a lot of uh, differences. Uh, and to uh, make like an, uh, yeah, a program of 25 productions out of that. It is, uh, it is finding a balance also and it's an... Uh, it was a choose also to to have an an uh, an balance in representation and representation of different kind of voices and uh, and different kind of genres also different kind of um, uh, views on dance but also different generations different scales uh, and different representations from the different uh, Nordic countries also so there are all, a lot of if if ifs already. Um, and that's the difference mm, with uh, uh, with organizing or planning or curating an, uh, an, an a festival because uh, I, I, I thought it's not a festival. It's like you say, it's a it's a representation platform in a way. Yeah. Um, and that it, that that as as a curator, that's ha that's also another approach. I think you also um, look to the applications or, or look to the selection process with with uh, uh, that glasses on, and that's different. I think. Yeah, and and now we are mostly presenting for for professionals in the field so that's probably has a also a different different uh, has has an effect on the, on the on the selection that that you're not presenting it for a, for a general audience even so so maybe yeah, but there was also a few things that uh, we were quite not ambi not ambitious but we wanted to ch to change a few things also and we were also op we were open up to productions that wasn't premiered yet or that would premiere um, till after the, the, the deadline in a way. Um, but still you feel that you f need to f fight a little bit against that also and, 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 and try to find that logic also because it's at the end it's sometimes if you need to, to, 
to wave five productions and you haven't seen this one production yet because it's not premiered yet and you know the other fours are, are very good, then you need to forge yourself in that logic also. And that's something that we, that we along the way, <coughs> needed to learn, I mean, not to learn, but implement in the, in the selection process also. Yeah, I, I agree, and I, I think this, it, it was, I think, a needed, perhaps, reaction to the situation in many ways to, to prolong and, and explore this idea of, and of course, it, at least in my mind, it comes, of course, from this idea of curating artists, not just works in a way. But I, I, I also agree that it's very challenging <laughs> to, to sort of balance these, these sort of very different uh, sort of approaches, and uh, I'm not sure how it, in the end, I can't remember, to be honest, like, how w did we actually choose any of the projects that were? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I, I was going to ask that. Remember. Did you choose? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that I don't. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember. But at least it was. I mean, it was a clear possibility and, and extend extensively discussed. <laughs> yeah. Some something that we haven't addressed is w the scale of it. How many applications were you working through? How many? How many items were you choosing from? I think, and if I can speak for Norway, I think we had around, um, I think around 70 applications via the open call, and then we added another 25, I think, or 30 to the, in the, the invitations. And that was our, our long list in a way. Yeah. So around 100 per country. Yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah. it was around 80, I think, in total. Yeah. I think it was uh, 90. I think it was 90. Yeah, yeah. yeah. from in Finland. In our for Iceland, it was for a Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was both of them that <laughs> But uh, but I would imagine that altogether somewhere like between three three fifty and four hundred, perhaps on the Nordic level. I think. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Ah, there, there's. Okay. 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 Three hundred. Yeah. Two hundred ninety. Ah, okay. That's that's. I would say three hundred then. Okay. Let's agree upon three hundred. So what do you see, um, because you talked about differences in structures and differences between those countries, can you maybe share something about what you, you experience as, as differences in, in, in those areas and maybe differences in aesthetics and approaches in through, through, through dance between the Nordics? Is there a special finish? Well, maybe from the Finnish side, something that we discussed is that uh, certain structures create certain aesthetics. So in Finland, you don't have that much money for production, so that creates a smaller working groups. So when we were looking for a piece that we would propose for the big Erko stage, there wasn't, yeah, there aren't that many works uh, available with big working groups. So yeah, I usually have like five performers on stage. Yeah, and uh, well, I think this is something. I mean, I d I'm not sure w what are the all the sources of this uh, discussion, but I mean, if I remember the previous editions, I mean that it was a little bit like problem with spaces, especially bigger stage, and with I think it affected the programming of of the festival uh, platform in Reykjavik and and in m perhaps in Copenhagen also. But here, here now we had the new house, of course, I mean, uh, mostly on paper, many ways when, <laughs> when, when it was happening. But, but I, I don't know, I think this was clearly, in my mind, a little bit striking that on the Nordic level, we didn't get so many applications for the yeah. big stage. Yeah. So I think... Irene? Yeah, maybe I can add on this topic, because uh, I think we had similar... Um, yeah, experience from the Norwegian applicants, uh, but also it was a bit like um, new information or a thought for me joining as a co-curator that uh, the ISOT team or uh, then SAMME uh, that I discussed uh, mostly with have this knowledge also about like um, what what curators will be in ISOT and maybe several, several of, of them are looking actually for big stage work for their venues. And uh, of course, this also affects um, who you want to choose because uh, it's not so interesting to, to 
to show uh, a lot of works in ISOT that doesn't fit the venues of the people coming there to book the performances. So uh, it was actually like a challenge uh, a bit how I understood it to to find these big stage works. And I think in Norway, it's also connected to certain trends, not only connected to uh, COVID-19, but uh, in general, I, I feel we had the, the latest years a lot of uh, uh, works uh, going more in the direction of social work or working in local environments with local groups of people, uh, maybe outside of the black box. Uh, and this um, uh, type of works, we I think we managed to have some of them for the ISOT, but it, it takes something else from the venue. Uh, often the artist maybe wants to stay over time in the, in the place to work with these groups. And, uh, and this was maybe something that was a bit harder to facilitate and didn't match this wish of a big stage works for the big black box, for example. Um, so this was also for me like a interest, an interesting topic. Uh, is this something ISOT should then try to, to change, to challenge the curators coming to ISOT to, to see things differently? Or should the ISOT accept uh, what is the um, uh, actual possibilities and, and match uh, the artist with these possibilities in a way? Yeah, this is, uh, I, I, I can believe it's a big factor. Now I'm hearing it over and over again that, that uh, just the constraints of, of venues is, is, is a big factor in, in the selection process. And I, I remember it as being part of, of the committee in Iceland that this was a huge, huge challenge to, to kind of adjust the program to, to the venues. But then, as we said also, talking to you, Mikael, is, is the, then maybe, are we excluding or, or is ISOT excluding other things that are maybe happening site specific or are they adaptable to this, this platform? Uh, I don't know. I mean, of course, there's many very sort of practical <laughs> things about it, of course, like uh, the sort of a time of the year. I mean, that uh, <laughs> affects a lot like what, what would make sense in terms of site specific. but. If I remember correctly, in Copenhagen, it was fairly encouraged to apply even for with site-specific. To be honest, again, I'm not remember so clearly what what happened in, in Copenhagen, but <laughs> but I, I I think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, I, if I remember now, just going to the this selection process, I do remember encountering some proposals, but not so many. But I think it's also in the wording of, of the call in a way, what is sort of encouraged in the call in a way. And I think the calls have been different in different editions also. And we, in Copenhagen, of course, the, 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 um, uh, there was a specific kind of a call for, for, for projects for younger audiences and now it has not been. So I think also how the call is formulated affects the applications a lot. Was the the, um, the fact in in, uh, in Oslo in 2014 because then we had other um, uh, financial possibilities also from the Norwegian uh, government to specifically work on uh, dance for young audiences, and then um, we had uh, I think one or two days before Ice Hot um, and a specific program on the on the dance for children. Was that that uh, did you get applications for for dance for children or was that not in the call this year? Uh, it was not uh, excluded in the call, so it was open in the call, but mm -hmm. uh, I can say for Norway, the applications as such were not that, uh, I think maybe we had three, and then we invited also uh, uh, another two, I think, or three, yeah. Um, but then in general, there was not that many anyway. Yeah. But then, then we have the possibility, of course, uh, to move things around into more and more, more and encouraging people to... to to take part in that and have have a, an exposure there, but um, as we're talking, uh, I saw what is hot right now. So, <laughs> where where are we heading? What do you see? Uh, see, uh, talking about trends and and movement, uh, you're you're seeing in 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 Finland that that due to the the funding system that people are maybe forced into s s smaller projects, smaller collectives, is is 
and what does that do and how does that form the scene? Is it, do you see a trend in some way? Are people working in certain certain way or, or is, is there some, some general movement in the Nordics? Um, and then in the Norwegian perspective, I see a lot of uh, artists working on these social political um, topics um, and also re um, representing or, or more um, lifting up some mar marginalized groups and also um, people that were a long time like uh, excluded on the on stage. That's something that um, that I that I see from now four years working in the Nordics, but also with my still um, Belgium uh, look that th that this this is really different from uh, from other more Central European um, uh, fields, I think. Um, but of course, yeah, you have to, uh, and here we g I refer again on the on the on the, um, on the um, supporting system. Also in Norway, it's a huge problem of uh, um, finding or creating work for the the mid scale and the big scale uh, uh, companies or, or uh, stages. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't know, Irene, how you feel about because you also have a lot of uh, view on the n on the Norwegian field with um, with Ravne dance. Uh, if you see some specific trends, well, of course, the last two years there was a lot of uh, a size specific work, but that is mainly uh, not mainly, but uh, more more um, more pushed by by the whole pandemic situation. But even then, before the pandemic situation, there were a lot of more projects that I received also via our constituents Scout that are uh, working on uh, outside of the black box. Um, maybe you can add something on that, uh, Irene? Uh, yeah, no, I think you cover, cover it quite well. Um, I agree uh, that we have a lot of these um, social political topics, but also how I see it now in the Norwegian field, this is also very uh, well integrated. Like you say, Sam, it's also about uh, the fact that we have actually different uh, people becoming artists that are given and take uh, space as they should. And uh, it doesn't feel like, um, if, you know what I mean, with more like forced topics, it doesn't feel like it's a topic for a project only, but more like a fully integrated uh, understanding of uh, living a life and uh, and and who you are as a person, and this connects to who you are as an artist, of course. Uh, so I feel like um, the Norwegian field right now is quite rich on that side, uh, and we have really uh, well-developed artists that uh, um, also uh, represent a broad range of people um, in some way, uh, at least for being a small field. I think this is quite evident in Norway now. Uh, and then on the on this um, understanding of the of the problem of the of the big scale, this is a, a topic in Norway. I think it's it's hard to find funding for producing works with the several performers or with the heavy um, yeah technique, for example. Um, but also, um, I think we we had especially with COVID nineteen maybe a. A quite strong like uh, decentralizing of uh, of artists working in in several places in Norway where there is also no possibility for working in that scale uh, so producing for other types of space by necessity um, yeah and I and I think um, yeah I think it's very interesting to 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 really do a work to understand better how uh, venues uh, can meet the the artists. What what does the artist want uh, in a way, uh, and how can we, as venues, although maybe we have like a huge stage that we want to fill, how can we also uh, facilitate other types of work? Um, I think this is a, an interesting discussion uh, for the future also. Uh, maybe I could add to this that you just said. Um, I think what's also emerging more and more is um, looking into different uh, colonial structures from a local point of view. So it's not as something that happens somewhere else, but how does it affect our societies and the way, way we are uh, living in the Nordic countries? So definitely that. Uh, and then something else, I think uh, 
interdisciplinary works. It's more and more like um, a collaboration between visual arts and performing arts that again probably doesn't always fit into the black box um, context. So maybe, maybe these are uh, lines of development that I can see. And maybe the, the question of the big stage, that's something that Dance House <laughs> is working with. So I'm, I'm really excited and curious to see how uh, Dance House Helsinki will change the scene. So maybe you are the expert <laughs> in commenting <laughs> on well, that. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> about my expertise, at least yet. <laughs> in these very early stages, but of course, I totally agree and I, I recognize these sort of, uh, how do I say, thematic sort of, uh, I don't know, trends or ideas in, in, uh, sort of floating in the air at the moment, and yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, but on, on the other hand, I, I do see f a fairly broad range of, of approaches in our field at the moment. I think there's a and in a, in a good sense, and of course, if and it's also a little bit like that. I sometimes feel that you, you of course, by by your own circumstances, you tend to work in a certain different, um, a specific place, and of course, it sort of colors your mind. But whenever I, I I remind myself and push myself to a little bit explore and go to other contexts, it reminds me very well of the, these different approaches and and broader. Sort of, uh, it's so it's 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 a challenge to keep moving also, and not to just sit on your chair in a way, which is uh, in daily 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 life sometimes a challenge. But but also, I mean, of course, the house and uh, it's it is a big question and big challenge. And but on the other hand, I I, I do feel that the, the artistic uh, field here is is sort of uh, eagerly looking towards it. At the same time, as you know also, that you, you're working with some of these artists that will be presented in near future, and I think you, they have like a <laughs> desire towards the space, which is of course fantastic, I think, and I, I'm very much looking forward to, to see what, what is proposed in, let's say, in coming few years. I think we will see a fairly big number of local premieres on the big stage is it's new it's exciting <laughs> well, maybe we will see that in the next edition of five thoughts a uh, different way of working with the big stage yeah this, uh, this is yeah we're coming to this point of talking about the future what uh, what do you see uh, do you any 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 thoughts about the future of isot and nordic dance well it's a broad broad question but uh, it it takes us somewhere <coughs> well i think it's uh and again, that's maybe a result from or after the pandemic. I think it's good to go to the core also and 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 show the art again and 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 bring the the, the best performances together on a on a platform where we can gather uh, alive in the here and the now. Because um, with those two years of a uh, pause, we have it more than needed than than ever needed in a way. Um, The, the the fact that we um, and that's maybe a bit connected also to the to the the, the financial structure of IceHot that's changed also now in the second round the support of the the on the Nordic level was uh, was uh, different than the first cycle so that was also a result for uh, or us as partners that we um, needed to invest uh, uh, more in it also and I think by doing that that shows already that we really uh, are engaged in that and that we that we see the urge of doing that. Um, to in a way force, uh, first and foremost, also to support your own national scene, but that you uh, uh, realize that you, if you join the forces, uh, then you are, uh, then you have big, bigger muscles, and then it works better. So I think the the urgency is still there, the relevancy is still there, uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, reasons enough to continue the, the the collaboration and the platform. Well, <coughs> I mean, just. How I see also a little bit on, on the sort of a broader Nordic level that in my sort of a experience and world view, I feel that there's a much bigger sort of a desire and urgency to, to, to discuss and collaborate on Nordic level than before. I think that there is a little bit like new sound in that sense in my wor world view. And
And I think it's uh, sort of uh, underlines perhaps the need of, of this kind of event or perhaps other kinds of events also. As we know, there's, there's other, other sort of a model for Nordic collaboration also. And, uh, but I, I think there's, it, at least for me, it, it's been, especially uh, like this edition and, and the whole sort of discussion, the curation, but other discussions also around this whole, I thought I think it sort of a creates to me a very strong idea that, uh, that there will be more and, and deeper collaboration in, in future. Nordic is in the new, um, the new local, that's what uh, Daniel yeah. also yeah. said in the beginning of our uh, mm. long discussions on, uh, on Zoom, because mm. that was also something we, we, I think we met two years only via Zoom. It was uh, after one and a half year that I finally saw Johannes for the first time alive yeah. in 360 degrees. Um, but I think also within uh, um, the collaboration with the five partners and the five countries, it's important to, to think also that we also have a bit of freedom if, you, if one of the countries are, is organizing ISOT to also implement the, the local urgencies also of that specific field. And I think that's really important if you th and think about this, this whole Nordic uh, ecosystem that, that um, maybe the needs in Norway are at that time completely different than the needs in, in Denmark that, that year. So I think that's also important. That was also important actually in our discussions also. Uh, and that's something mm, new in, in, in our discussions. And I think we can, we can even go further in that. And I think that will be an aim for the future. Yeah, and the platform means in, in constant re-evaluation re process. So, so the, the you will bring something for the next uh, curation board and uh, curation process so I, I, that you will do. Uh, I think it's time to hand the mic over to our audience and see if there are any anything that, that you want to ask our curators. So, anyone? Or if uh, I, I look to Daniel, because Daniel is the only one in the, in the room that was also in the curating part, if you want to add something, Daniel. So um, I wanted to ask, uh, what do you think is the benefit of changing the curational practice from um, having an outside eye, like it was in the beginning? So this explanation yeah. was maybe yeah. missing that the, the, the first round was the choice of what is put on stage was given to people from actually from different continents. So three people who look like an outside eye into what we are doing. And I think the, uh, the first idea was to, to, um, to have a chance to see how others look at what we are doing in Nordic countries. And, and, and now it's looked from the inside and I would like to ask, what do you think is the benefit of that compared to the to the previous uh, way? And my second question maybe is it follows from this quite naturally, like who is it then for? Like who do you think when you, because you you've been talking a lot about the artist and the artistic processes and what's happening in the countries, um, but who were you thinking? Who are you, Who did you build this program for? Well, maybe I can answer the first question because I was in both situations. Um, when I was uh, invited for the selection for uh, ISOT in 2014 in Oslo, it was together with Kathy Levy and Bettina Masuch. And then, of course, you have an, an, a little bit of an, I wouldn't even say a knowledge, but a, a view on what Nordic dance is. or uh, It's like a little tip of the, of the mountain. And then you... Um, are overwhelmed by 380 or, n or 400 applications. Um, I think this 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 uh, outside eye approach is, can be really interesting also. But I think if you really want to go to to the depth and 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 work on on necessities and urgencies and 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 if you want to include the the needs of a of a scene. Uh, the Nordic scene or the national scenes, then I think it's um, it's much more interesting to 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 do that from inside also. Um, 
it's a it's a balance of course the the the, the complete fresh approach can be surprised for uh, can be surprising for us in a way as the outsider but uh, maybe it's not the, the the best representation then of of the field that the the the, the partners or the country wants to present so um I see the the benefits of doing it from the inside with the all with the whole knowledge uh, that you have with the whole contextualization of the field, uh, also with uh, the the the, the ex extended knowledge now with uh, with the co-creators and with the national partners, just to 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 include all those um, um, yeah urgencies. I I can only explain it like this, and uh, then you can then you can really work on on what uh, what's important at the moment. Then I'm thinking only that, you know, like, we are such a small sector, and any of you who are in those power positions, I mean, I've been one of you guys once, so I also talk to myself here, um, that you are, like, I didn't want that responsibility as the director of the Dance and Suits, because I was already using a lot of powers by creating the program in Dance and Suits, choosing who's going to have their premieres there, who we're going to support, who's going to be in residency, and I felt like, okay, if I, on top of that, I'm there to choose who is going to have this international exposure, I'm like loading myself with a lot of powers over a huge amount of artists. And, I, and, and, and that I feel like, I don't know, did you discuss this at all in fr from, the, from the perspective of, of, of using powers? I think it was, of course, recognized and discussed. I mean, of course, I can't compare because, I mean, I wasn't... Uh, Part of the thing in the early f when when it, uh, the first model of of this outside eye. So I mean, I I've only sort of um, witnessed uh, this sort of more Nordic approach. Even the previous model was like uh, national jury and a Nordic jury. So I think this was uh, this has been. I can't. I don't remember how many editions were done. In fact, with the C international jury. So so I, I don't know. But I mean. <laughs> I think three, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I, I love it. Follow, follow, follow the, the. I mean, of course, the power, power, power sort of concentration is issue is is totally there. But on the other hand, uh, at least how I experience this uh, this process now, but that of course we on on the national level, there's a, there's a lot of uh, how do I say experience and knowledge that sort of. Uh, seeps into the discussion and, and it affects, but on the other hand, I think that that it was fairly dynamic uh, discussion on Nordic level in the jury, that I mean, I don't feel that we were, or anyone in the jury was like f pushing on the national level strongly anything. So I think th it was very, I think a lot of the decisions were made by, or, or how would I say, supported by by representatives other countries, in fact, so it wasn't not like that we come with a national sort of a short list and this is it kind of discussion at all in, in my mind at least, yeah. Daniel? Yeah. Uh, thank you, hey, I'm Daniel, I, I was also in the jury and also one of the partners. Um, and I'd and, um, uh, like to just add or uh, the way I'm listening to to uh, this conversation, um, I'm missing maybe a little bit the work uh, that we put in. Um, not in relation to, I mean, more more in relation to to what what we felt was important was exactly to talk about these things. Um, and we what we did was have many many meetings uh, over a long period of time not discussing the program or selection process but actually talking about uh, power structures uh, urgencies needs in the different uh, countries and and thinking around uh, guidelines that we written and transparency in the in the in, in the process um, so that the actual choices when we came to that discussion would be like we had a, a common curat curatorial praxis, even though we were a jury situation, and I'm thinking that we could we could ask that of ourselves as partners. It's very hard to ask that of an external jury that you that that you hire to do the job. I think, and then what we're hoping for is is some sort of ripple effect, which is is coming through 
uh, our discussions as Nordic partners, taking responsibility also for the program in the platform uh, so that we can uh, together uh, think of ways to work together also outside of the platform. And also looking, now it was, it was um, you know, interrupted by the famous Corona, but uh, what we also were discussing was how do, and, and they put a lot of emphasis on this from the Finnish side, how do we find local partners to hook up with the artists that anyway travel to, to Helsinki now so that they could do workshops, would do touring nationally, and all these kinds of work we can do if we are both jury and partner. Um, and hopefully can do even more in the future. Um, and also, like presenting, like we did, we presented lots of the works, but supposed to be right after the platform, but we presented it then before the platform, since the platform was moved and stuff. But it's so many of those layers, I think, that, that was added a little bit to answer Virve's uh, question. I, we, were hope, we were hoping to, to revitalize the position of ISHOT so that we can do more. Or, or be more, yeah. You know, I know we already maybe um, touched a bit upon it, but I think I'm just extremely curious to understand, um, because I think that this platform is kind of the, f like, we have actually, during these days, I feel it's been mentioned several times, this big stage and big scale work. And I know that you're also saying, uh, maybe we can find, like, there will be new ways of thinking about what big scale work is. But I also don't recall having a moment talking to IceHut about what kind of scale I wanted to present my work in. And I do, I'm here with a solo. So, of course, I'm put on a small stage, and I also am not, I understand for the, individual venues themselves, when they actually uh, curate work, you have to think about uh, how many audience can we pull with this specific artist. But here you do have the audience already. So somehow I feel like there is also a certain hierarchy in thinking about who can be in what space and who can fill out that space. And I'm just extremely curious to hear how you think about that hierarchy and how you actually place your artists where, because I don't remember having that conversation actually, whether I wanted to be in a small space or in a big space, like sp stage or, yeah, so if you can elaborate a bit on that. Um, as, uh, as a jury member and a partner member, uh, we are very close into the decision of the, of the program, but at a certain time the program is made with, of course, the knowledge of what kind of venues there are, and then, um, Anyway, that package goes to the uh, organizing partner who, who, who plans and everything according to the, to the production technical uh, limitations or possibilities. Uh, and in that way, we as partners or jury members are not that uh, closely connected in that decision because I can imagine that it's partly also because of uh, practical things or, or, or limitations and technical possibilities or venues or changes of venues. I think maybe that's uh, the, the <coughs> more question well, about well, well for I you I then. I huh? would absolutely. I mean, I, I do think it's, of course, it's, it's part of the discussion in, in, in the selection process. And I mean, if I remember the call right, perhaps not, but I mean, there was a possibility to somehow define the scale in the, in the call. I'm not, again, sorry for being... <laughs> with bad memory, but uh, I totally agree with Samet that it, it it comes to a lot of uh, issues regarding the, 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 the uh, what I would call a big puzzle of putting a, a big chunk of work inside three days. I think there's a lot of uh, sort of a cons consideration and actually I would imagine always a lot of compromises made also and it's, it's a very specific challenge and uh, I, I, w I don't think it's sometimes that it would reflect so much the idea of, of, of the, 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 how would I say, possible bo box office uh, appeal. I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's the main factor in this discussion, no. I have a small question. Um, at least here in Finland, the biotope of contemporary dance in 
Finland is quite big and the range of artists working for contemporary dance are quite huge as well the country is very big and we work from Inari to Helsinki and everything all the places between those cities so how much you worked uh, or how much you traveled to see various artists in various different cities than in capital well, this is, of course, something to, <laughs> to really admit that, I mean, of course, it's, it's up to individual jury member, I mean, whatever situation he or she is working from, but it's not included in the actual jury work at all. But this is, of course, it's a fact, it's a call <laughs> by, by application and, and, and materials in that sense. But I think the w this was discussed uh, again in this context, and I think what what was sort of a, a how do I say, one kind of a proposal, perhaps not a solution, but proposal was this uh, so-called national advisors. I think s there are some here present from various countries, Sanna and, and, and Claire over there. And I mean, this. Uh, what happened, at least in our context, please uh, correct me, Rika, if I remember wrong, but when we were kind of more or less ready with the sort of, um, how would I say, longer short list, we shared it with these national advisors and, and uh, asked for feedback, like what is, what is, especially the question was, what is missing in a way? And I, I don't know if some, perhaps, Sanna, you would like to comment on the discussion and was it meaningful from this sort of a wider regional point of view. But, but I, I, so I, I would say that it was acknowledged but not solved. <laughs> and maybe I can add to that, that at least for me personally, I, that was one of the factors that I looked at, that, that not all the works are produced in Helsinki by the same production house. So we do have sort of five works that were selected. One of them was produced in Kuopio and one of them in, in Tallinn and then the rest uh, three in Helsinki. Of course, that is not hugely diverse, but that is something that we did, we did try to look at. Um, and yeah, of course, it's not possible to see everything, but I, I was happy to see fluids, for example, in Tallinn in 2018. So. so we're getting into the end of this session, so I'll open up for one last question from Lena. So. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for creating this space. Um, I'm just going to link to a question that was asked at the last session about power, and it was something that Lieva said that we, as a a, a, a industry or a, a niche, uh, we are afraid of uh, representative power. Uh, so therefore my question is how will IceHot continue lobby for the art form? Because uh, right now what's happening in terms of uh, financial change, uh, the war, the, p the aftermath of the pandemics, like where do you see this art form being presented in 10 years from now? Like w will it be more commercial work that we'll see on the big stages? Will it still be Mette Ingvartsen or will she be in a small studio at the end of a corner? Like, I think there's a lot of questions that needs to be addressed in terms of how we create this space for this particular art form that we, we love and fight for. <laughs> tiny. <laughs> Tyn well. tiny, tiny question. Well, of course, can, I, can someone give a short <laughs> and tiny answer to this? That's this first and first and foremost, or 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 aim and or or duty or work as artistic directors of our own specific uh, uh, organizations to do that to put to put dance on on the map and keep it on the map. Also, talk with uh, with politicians, with uh, with uh, funding bodies about the importance of dance and the relevance of dance um, and the artistic quality of dance. Um, and that's something that we on the Nordic level also need to do, and we are doing that constantly. Uh, and we try to, uh, to to get the right persons on the right moment constantly to, to, to put that on the agenda. Uh, for instance, also here during these uh, three days, we had a lot of meetings also with uh, uh, with funders, with politicians, with people who, who also has the power, who has the power uh, and has the money at the same time. So that's very important also. 
And it's about also uh, explaining over and over again why we are doing it and what it is, because it's easily for, I mean, it, it's uh, as a decision maker on, on, the, on the cultural policy level, it's, uh, it's one of the, 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 the thousands of projects that are passing by every day or in a year. Um, so I think that's our, uh, that's our aim and our duty to do that constantly. But we are doing that already on our national level in a way also. Thank you. That nice last words. We'll, we'll just continue to strive and do better and uh, making sure that the ISOT platform lives for, for now and, and evermore. So, so thank you for this session. And uh, the, this is, was live streamed and will be available. So we have another session coming up here uh, at 3 o'clock and a bunch of events and, and stuff. And then see you all tonight. Thank you.